Um, it's great to see everyone here tonight. Uh, my name is Dr. Jacqueline Michael, and I'm an assistant professor of religion um, at that university that's just about 10 minutes away from us, the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. And um, I am so happy that we are um, having this discussion. This has been in the works for, uh, well, before the pandemic, if you can even remember uh, that time. <laughs> um, so I'm really, really happy that um, we're finally uh, being able to, to uh, actually have this event. And um, before I introduce our panelists, I just want to say a couple things about uh, tonight and uh, our intentions with this conversation. Uh, we are responding, of course, to the um, beautiful photography that's upstairs by Lala Asadi. And um, we will, uh, during the panel, we'll be talking about our responses to her um, choices in representation and to her artwork. But I think, um, Right now, in, in Chattanooga, in the United States, we are having really important discussions, it seems to me, discussions about what it means to be an American, and uh, discussions about what it means to be Chattanoogan. Um, and in these discussions, I find that um, uh, minority voices are often uh, not a part or are often overlooked, uh, aren't given a proper due. And I think that uh, one of our intentions with tonight's event is to uplift the voices of, um, of uh, women in our community, uh, particularly women who are Chattanoogans, uh, women who are also part of the Muslim communities, women who are also part of Arab communities, uh, and hear from their perspectives about these important questions uh, and uh, discussions that we're having today. So that's really, uh, I think, uh, one of the goals that we, that we have in mind for tonight. I think, uh, as Americans and as Chattanoogans, I think that we are revisiting our pasts in a really important way, and in that work, we're also thinking about our presence in a different way, our present in a different way. And in that sense, I think our discussion tonight is a, a continuation of some of the important um, conversations we've been having in Chattanooga. I'm thinking recently the, um, the discussions and the speech given by Dr. Eddie Blood, um, not too far from here, uh, as part of the Ed Johnson Memorial commemorations. I don't know if any of you were there, but I was there and um, my eyes were not dry. <laughs> uh, so I think that um, it, tonight we're extending a lot of the things that I uh, heard in that conversation and continuing them forward. All right, that long speech over. Um, I want to introduce um, our panelists. I'll start um, over on the far right with Sarah Khan. Uh, next, Sarah al -Hawan and Rhonda Eisen. And my first question um, for each of our panelists, um, we'll start with Saraf, um, if you don't mind, but I'd like for each of you to introduce yourself to us, let us know um, what you, uh, your uh, communities that you're a part of here in Chattanooga, let us know how you came to uh, come and be a part of this event, and by that I mean we've been having these discussions over the summer, and of course um, we've been talking about it, and we've invited you, but more than that, um, what, what does it mean for you to be here with us tonight? Thank you so very much, uh, Jacqueline and Hunter Museum for providing this uh, uh, opportunity to communicate you all as well. And um, first of all, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It's uh, may peace on you all with the blessings and mercy of the Lord Almighty. This is how we greet uh, being Muslim, like we greet each other. So uh, uh, yes, uh, this is my first time in front of this big audience. But I'm an artist and I'm an art educator. I work with nonprofit organization, Art 120, here in Chattanooga. And I'm, I'm coming from, um, I'm born and raised in Karachi, Pakistan. That is in Asia. I hope you guys are familiar with that. <laughs> so um, my reason coming to Chattanooga is my husband. And we got married and then Iqbal bring me here. And that's an opportunity for me to come and meet you all. So, um, so I've worked with Art120 for like, um, since uh, 2015, and now we are working on different art projects, um, uh, bringing art of uh, Pakistan, <clears throat> truck art of Pakistan, and merging it here in this community. It's a beautiful experience. Initially, I started teaching um, underprivileged schools, uh, uh, like uh, kids from Bethlehem Center, I used to teach them welding, and I, when I was teaching that class, I thought that we should have more community people come here, like uh, from Pakistani or Muslim and uh, Palestinian or you know uh, Hispanic. We have some 
different culture living here in Chattanooga. So I was thinking that would be nice to have colors in the class. So, so since then I was uh, talking to her and then, you know, things happen one after each other and now I'm here in front of you all. <laughs> Jacqueline um, asked me to join and I would love to because since I'm an artist, so I love her work and I would love to be here. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm Sarah Elvan. I am several things. I belong to several communities. So I am Palestinian. I'm American. I'm a Chattanoogan. Um, I am a millennial. Uh, <laughs> I'm a mom. Um, I was born in Tennessee. I was raised in Chattanooga. I'm first generation American. My parents came to Tennessee as refugees during the Gulf War between Kuwait and Iraq. Um, and I have grown up here, I've lived in Kuwait, I've worked in Kuwait, but I'm Palestinian, not Kuwaiti. So I'm a lot of things, it's very complicated, as I'm sure everybody's identity is. Um, I am here because I was um, speaking at a Palestinian rally over the summer, um, and then Jacqueline reached out and uh, asked me to be a part of just the brainstorming, but then also this, and. As a Chattanoogan, I am very invested in our community. I also work in the nonprofit sector, and I'm always looking for ways to be a better Muslim, Arab, Palestinian, Chattanoogan. Um, and our the safety of Chattanooga means a lot to me, especially as a mother raising a son here whose middle name is Muhammad. Um, that's a big deal. So uh, I've always felt supported in Chattanooga, and I really want to give back and kind of help educate and spread awareness and just be open to have conversations that at this time feel very heavy and difficult, um, but are very necessary. Thank you, Sarah. I'm Brenda Dean. I came here to Chattanooga in August 2016 as a refugee with my husband and my three boys. I'm my fourth son, he born here in Chattanooga. Uh, I'm very happy and very glad I'm here in Chattanooga. People here very kind, very nice. Um, I'm a registered nurse in my country, uh, but I wasn't able to work here because um, I said in Arabic and all my documents in Arabic. Um, you can see from my dialect, I'm not speaking really good English, I'm still learning. I'm working on my GED right now. And my last test this Saturday. The after tomorrow, my last says, and please pray for me to, get my, to pass this test and get my GED and go to Texas State to study nursing from the beginning. And um, I think you should come to UTC and not Texas State. Whatever, I really just want to study nurse and start a career from here. And um, Jacqueline, she invited me to be in here, and I'm very happy to be here with you guys and tell you a little bit about me. I'm a part from the Sudanese community, and uh, I'm a leader in my community. And, like, I like that. I'm helping them and like, uh, reach out with them with the resources, with help, and whatever they need. Like, I'm very active in my community. Yes, I can testify to that. Uh, there, um, if you uh, have seen the news re recently, you know that a couple weeks ago there was a coup in Sudan, and Rhonda and um, uh, other members of the Sudanese community here in Chattanooga had a rally on the Walnut Street Bridge. I think at least 75 people were a part of, uh, of that event. That was very close. Um, so we are here tonight um, uh, in response to the artwork upstairs. So I, I wanted to start with that to make sure that we do talk about that, because we'll talk about a lot of different uh, subjects tonight. Lala Asadi herself, uh, Moroccan, American, um, and uh, has created uh, lots of different kinds of ways of representing Moroccan and, um, and Muslim women um, upstairs in the photographs. And we'll, yeah, and, and as they are mentioned after this panel, we'll be able to go upstairs and to look at those a little bit more. But it's, it, it was really striking to me to see the photography because in visual representations of, uh, of Muslims, it's often very gendered and it's often very gendered male, right? When you see things, uh, images in the news and in different kinds of media, 
it seems to me that um, it's predominantly men in a, in a religious space at a mosque uh, lined up praying. That's the predominant image. The images upstairs present, um, to my mind, very different ways of uh, thinking about Muslims and forefronting Muslim women, uh, first of all. And second of all, the images upstairs, um, the representations of Muslim women uh, are definitely not monolithic at all. You have women who are covered, women who are not covered. You have women who are looking at you, looking right at you, and then you have um, photographs where you're deliberately, um, the gaze is, is not looking at you, in a sense. So there's not a single representation upstairs either. Um, I'd like to hear from each of you and invite you to share your thoughts on uh, what you think about the artwork upstairs, what Lala is doing in her representations of Muslim and Arab and Moroccan women. Um, anyone want to, want to start? You're the artist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the artist. <laughs> well, um, yeah, um, I would like to ask from the audience, have you seen her work, any of you? So, yeah, the, um, can I ask them what they think about the work? This, you know, being artists, I think, create things in different way, but I agree with that, with Q&A in the last. But um, for me, uh, seeing her work as an artist, I think that's her impression of art that she depicted, and she wanted people to know uh, what she is thinking about the, uh, this, that's uh, the pictures, the, um, the photography is all from the harem, the private places for the women in their houses. So, and this is the way they are, you know, but that again, that's a particular uh, harem. So I never experienced that personally, but I saw those pictures. So I can tell, you know, just like a movie, when you, um, uh, some uh, directors producing some art piece, so you understand the work uh, behind with the, uh, with the details of the movie that uh, which era was that when this happened so they you know depict that in the movie so audience can understand so this is an artist work and she studied European artists a lot and uh, Morocco was um, um, under the uh, government of uh, France for a long time and then they got their uh, uh, country uh, you know this is the history what I think that is going on several years ago one um, ruler comes after another ruler comes and power you know the, the game of the power goes on so for the, her culture she depicted that and I think that's a wonderful work being a Muslim um, uh, female, I think she didn't do any uh, unjust with females from Morocco. She didn't do any uh, bad thing. And I think that's a very good way of expression that people can understand how they look like, the harem look like, how, what kind of drapery they, they use, and uh, the way she used bullets uh, in a very different way. I never experienced this before. I've never seen that. So that's a very unique thing that she blended in her art and bringing the bullets in a very positive way, you know, that can be used in that way. So that's very interesting for me, I think, yeah. Thank you, and I think it says this on the, um, on the, on the descriptions upstairs, but just to clarify, the bullets that are used in the images are American bullets. So that's something to keep in mind when you take a look at the images. Sarah. I am not an artist, so. <laughs> <laughs> My impression um, of the work, I think it's very interesting. I think if you get a chance to read about the artist and her background and how, again, it's very France and Saudi Arabia, but she's originally Moroccan and just a lot of mix, um, you can see that in the artwork. Um, and I think that it's, it's very unique to her experience. And I think that that's really important to highlight is that you can look at being a Muslim woman, you can look at this art and appreciate it for it being her experience, but I could also see ways in which maybe it's definitely not representative of everybody else's views. Um, so I think w one of the most interesting things is how the women's subjects are very much like engulfed or hidden behind just how complex the backgrounds are, or um, the patterns in the furniture, or the patterns on them, or writing all over their clothes. Um, and it's kind of like the woman is just not really visible, um, or is the subject who she's just there to kind of wear all of that. Um, but I think what's also pretty awesome uh, is that the women look very rebellious in it, 
And I think that that also stems a lot from probably her personal experience and, and upbringing. Um, my favorite piece is one that has four photographs. And there's like a little boy and then a little girl without a headscarf. And then um, above it, there's a woman with her eyes showing, wearing the whole headscarf and face covering, and then an older woman with everything kind of covered. And I think that that says um, a lot about Arab Muslim culture. Uh, I think these days, rebellion and um, being outspoken is tolerated more when you're younger. But as you age, it's kind of like you have to fade back and just that that's it. It's kind of over for you. Um, so those are my not artistic impressions of art. Thank you so much. I'm not an artist, too. But I think uh, women, they're not just one type of them. But I'm very thankful that Mama Saidi, she's, uh, she's working to portray the positive imagination of the women Muslim. But I want you to remember, Mama Saidi, she's just uh, represent the experience of uh, women, Muslim women from North Africa, because uh, uh, Arabic women, Muslim, they uh, from all the over the world, and they have different experience, different cultures. Like for example, women from Saudi Arabia and Yemen, they have uh, different experience than women from Libya and Egypt. And women from Sudan, in particular, women from Darfur, they are a different story. But what is uh, unique them, they are sharing the same thing the same language, the same um, um, gender, um, gender related problem all together. Thank you, and I hope that we'll continue these conversations uh, after the panel when we uh, will have a chance to go upstairs and, and talk a little bit more together. So I, I sure. need to add one thing. The painting you were talking about, the boys, they all are girls. And they're the stages of the girls, how in her society that she's depicting, especially, I'm saying her society, that doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean it's all the Muslims communities like that. So she depicted those stages that young girl is wearing hijab in different way when they grow older and then older, then they cover all of their faces. So they were the stages of hijab that she showed in that painting specifically. But about the rebellious woman, I think that's a scene of harem. Just imagine that you are sitting in your own room, your own house, so you, you have freedom. So I think I'm pretty, my, my thought is like pretty much like they are not rebellious. They are sitting in their harem and they're relaxing and they're relaxing pose she depicted. And I think we all should, you know, admire that, that wow, they are, you know, they have a comfort way of doing it. It's a different picture. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, yeah, there's lots of different ways to um, think about uh, the images of Syria. We, you know, we don't know, uh, the women aren't, you know, literally speaking to us, so there's a lot of room for interpretation. I think that's important. Um, I want to change subjects a little bit. Um, I want to ask about uh, your identities um, uh, as, as women who belong to, uh, you know, Palestinian communities, women who belong to Muslim communities, Sudanese communities. Uh, American communities, um, and I want to talk about um, the anti-Arab and anti-Muslim um, sentiment and discrimination that we know is unfortunately, um, a, it's a phenomenon here, not just here obviously, um, in the United States, it's a global phenomenon, unfortunately, um, but it's it's something that I think, um, you know, it, it, it impacts um, some women from those communities more than others. Um, and then uh, anti-Arab and anti-Muslim racism, of course, isn't the, the only story or the only um, ways in which we can talk about these relationships, but um, it does happen, it happens here in our community, and I think um, it's, it's worth spending a little bit of time on. Um, and I'd love for each of you to reflect on uh, these, these issues that we have um, in our communities. I can just say, after 9-11, I think the figure is hate crimes against women who were visibly Muslim, Muslim in public spaces. Hate crimes increased by 500% from one percentage that, uh, one study that I've seen. Uh, you know, and not just vis visibly Muslim women, other uh, women were perceived as Muslim um, because religion is racialized uh, in our country. 
Um, so I'd like to hear from each of you um, if, if you uh, have experienced something like this, and if you feel comfortable sharing that with us. Uh, and also, um, if you haven't experienced that yourself, maybe others in your in, in the communities that you're a part of have experienced it, and um, if you'd be willing to share um, how that has impacted you or your communities, um, I'd love, love to give some space to that. Uh, it's, of course, it's affected us before I came here, because uh, I, I feel like people, um, especially after uh, September 11, people are afraid of are Muslim, and we became like a source of tourism for them, but I want to tell you, we're not like that. We are very friend, we are lovely, and we are peaceful, because Islam, I know, it's a religion of peace, religion of love, um, call for uh, unity for all the uh, people from different races, different religions. Um, those people who attack or do bad things by the name of Islam, they are not related to us. We are totally different from them. And uh, I have no experience about any things here in Chattanooga. That's why I love it, and I hope I don't experience it at all. Um, I think for me, I pro I have not experienced as much as maybe other people have, and I think that that's because I don't speak English with an accent. Um, I think that I could be easily mistaken for Hispanic. Um, and I just don't, you know, like, it's just, you can't be like, that's a Muslim girl right there. <laughs> um, but definitely, I would say before 9-11, um, all of the communities that I belong to and all of the parts of my identity coexisted in harmony. Um, and it was the second that 9-11 happened and that we knew, you know, like, what actually had happened and that, I think they said Saddam Hussein, uh, first, um, that's when it was, it was kind of like an automatic, oh no, there has to be like a split now. Um, before a lot of the conversations that I had with friends or strangers um, were about just informing them about, you know, our beliefs and there was a genuine kind of just curiosity and a mutual exchange of information and ideas. Uh, after 9-11, it was, it just became like, oh, and now I have to represent this entire religion. Um, and, you know, I kind of, I should water some things down, but then I don't want to misrepresent this religion. And then, you know, I need to work on strengthening my own religion. Who made me a spokesperson for all of these people? Um, and then I think also being in the South, it's, I had to pick, you know, depending on the areas. Am I American and Chattanoogan, and I'm not going to speak Arabic in public? Um, or am I now in a platform where I really need to be more Arab and be more Muslim and, you know, represent that? Um, I, have, I do have family members who cover their hair, and that's, I think, the... It's either between that or screaming like, hey, Muhammad, in a Walmart, like that's when you know <laughs> that things are different because of the looks. And again, I think it was that shift from just like curiosity to fear. Um, and yeah, just, just feeling that burden of now I need to educate everybody or be a good role model. Um, Thank you. And before we get to set up, this is something that Sarah and I actually spoke about a little bit um, prior to the panel. Um, I personally, um, uh, you know, as, as an educator and an activist, um, you know, with Muslim communities, um, I think that I think that the conversation um, about these issues needs to be a bit, a bit reframed. I um, think that we um, should stop. Um, at, you know, we're thinking that Muslims have to explain themselves, um, have to prove their loyalties to us as Americans, have to um, you know, you know um, show us, uh, you know, pr prove their loyalties to our to our nation, to our communities, uh, and stand up and be the first to denounce these things. Um, you know, because and, and the, the the thing is, is that um, you know, so for anti-black racism, I, I believe in our country. Hopefully, we've moved on from from um, thinking that it, it has to be, you know, folks in the black American community that have to solve those problems. 
Um, there are uh, scholars in, in my field who um, have, have written about this and have talked about that reframing the conversation on Islamophobia has to really put the focus on, uh, on the communities or the moral burden should be on the communities within which anti-Muslim um, and anti-Arab sentiment emanates in. And that's primarily communities of people who look like me, who are white. Um, and uh, so that, that, that was one thing um, that I, I wanted to speak to uh, a little bit. But um, that's an extended conversation. And I, um, I love the Meet Your Muslim Neighbor events that happen here in Chattanooga. Um, I've been to them. Uh, but I, I, I love the food especially. <laughs> it's amazing food. Uh, but, you know, I think um, in the end when I attend those events, I have a, a, a bit of a twinge of, of, of guilt because um, I regret that, um, that, that uh, just here in the United States that we are constantly asking Muslims, can you, can you be Muslim and can you be American? Um, uh, so perhaps we can continue that conversation if people are interested in it. But now let's hear from some. Thank you, Jacqueline, again. Um, uh, you were asking about the experiences. The incident happened. Um, I was not there when 9-11 happened, but my husband was there at that time, and he has gone through a strange time. And he's here. He can speak for himself, too, if you want to talk to him afterwards. So he can listen to, I mean, you all can listen to his story. But. Uh, when I came here, I moved here, and I was uh, working at that time at Walgreens Pharmacy. That is like an institution for me because um, I don't have my degree evaluation done, so I cannot go to the, any university. Back home, I was teaching art in universities over there, so that is like another you know, chapter of my life. So that is in my neighborhood, so that's a very advantage. And I met lots of artists over there, and people uh, at Walgreens, they were looking at me and said, you know, some of them, why you cover your hair, head? <laughs> and I said, oh, so this kind of uh, things were, you know, I was listening to them, uh, uh, from them, and I said, well, I, Jesus' mom, Mary, I inspired from her, and I would like to be like her. So, you know, then the barriers, go away, the barrier in between me and them. So I think it's all of us, all of us is responsible for any reaction. All humans are beautiful, kind, gentle from the heart, and some humans are very dangerous. So we, I think it's time for us, since on this platform, I think it's time for us to understand things and clear your mind and, you know, come up with, there's one thing that I would like to do here, if you have time, that I want um, my lovely uh, listeners, audience, to do one thing with me, if you are ready for that. Would you like to do it? Can I ask them to do it? And it's involved everyone. And it's, 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 it's going to be involved everyone. So, uh, this is a kind of art um, um, uh, lessons, planner, one of the lesson plan. So I want you all to close your eyes for um, like uh, one minute. And I'm going to say one, two, three, then close your eyes, not right now. <laughs> so when I'm going to say one, two, three, then close your eyes. And then I want you to put your hand on your forehead and all of us are going to do it together. And move your hand on your head, forehead like this, that you are clearing your mind from every thought in your mind, like about this event, especially about the Muslims or humans and what is happening, what not. Just, or since the uh, time is moving so fast, I'm going to count one, two, three. Close your eyes, please, all of you. And put your hand, um, yes, there you, I'm, I'm seeing all of you doing it. So now one, two, three, open your eyes. So this is a lesson, uh, we are, uh, we're, I was attending a workshop. So what did you feel about that? Did you feel anything? I was thinking to ask you all to stand up first and you know, uh, take all this stress out and you know, relax, but uh, this is quite enough for me right now because we humans are like a folk of, sh what do you call it, folk of sheep? flock of sheep that you know that one leader asks you to do something and we just follow 
what I ask you to do, you just follow it, right? So nobody says, why she's doing it, right? Nobody asks me, why you are doing this? No, I'm not going to do it. No, you just follow me because you trusted me. So this is the time that all humanity need to be together without any color, any race, or anything. And um, after um, what happened in Chattanooga, that boy, I want you all, um, I'm not a mother, unfortunately or fortunately. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but you know, uh, just think about that. Your son did something like that all of a sudden in the morning time, and you've heard this news. What would be your feeling from inside? So that boy was very young. I don't know him personally. Um, the incident happened in the, the Chattanooga. Yeah, I think Sud was talking about in 2015 when um, there was a, a mass shooting here. Um, Maybe. Right, yes. at, at, at a couple of marine recruitment centers. Yeah. So just imagine putting yourself on the mother's heart. Because I met that boy maybe once in masjid, the mosque or church. So, and he was very nice, sweet to me. I never imagined, and the family is so nice. So I, I was like, that was shock for me. I said, what happened all of a sudden? And then the news were saying, we don't know he's terrorist or not. We, we don't know he's terrorist or not. Terrorist, terror word is like somebody's doing something to someone. And it's make, it's bring tra terror, right? We get afraid. Oh my goodness, what happened? So the human, whoever the human is, and he's doing the mass shooting anywhere around the world. And because I'm American, now I'm citizen, so I have to protect my country, right? That's my responsibility. But I'm American, but first I am human first. So I need to respect what happened to that boy. What happened to my son? Why he did that? Is he has some mental disorder bringing up for a long time? I didn't know. So that mother was totally crushed. My neighbors were wonderful. They bring bouquet to my house, flowers, and they were saying, we are with you. If you have any problem, we are there. And honestly, that first night was very <laughs> difficult for me <laughs> because you, you watch movies. I have impression on my mind, oh, somebody, they don't like Muslim. They just come to our house. They burn our house and, you know, something happened to us. So I was, I cannot sleep that night properly, but because we all have faith in our heart, faith on the creator who's created us, same to same, you know, all humans are same. So I was like, okay, I need to sleep well. So I sleep well. But the interesting part of that, you know, like incident happen, things happen, people have, um, you know, bad things comes, people changes, but I think we all, have to play our role in the society to bring togetherness. And that only comes when we clear our thoughts and we saw our, the, the person in front of us, we think that this has some personality. Let's explore about the person. Give a chance. Learn more about that. I think then we can able to develop good qualities. Maybe you can reflect me some good qualities that I would love to learn from you. So this is a process, I think we all, we all are going through it. I, I agree with that. A lot of Navy SEALs, their families, they have gone through so much because sudden deaths are very shocking, very shocking. So we just, you know, for me, these incident happened for human, humanity to learn, not to try to make your, this is what happened to our community, that Muslim community. We are getting more closer to our kids. What went wrong to that kid? So that's why we're communicating. Something happened, you have to speak to us. Please don't do this because everybody's called us terrorists. We are not terrorists. We, Islam is a religion of peace. We are the ambassador of the peace religion. What we are going to do? So it's not just Islam. It's every religion is a religion of peace. So why we have differences? Why don't we all together come on one, you know, platform together? Thank you. Thank you. I, yeah, I think what's one of the, thing that, the things I'm hearing Sana say is that, um, you know, violence happens in all social communities. It happens in all religious communities. But right now, um, you know, we're in a moment where if the perpetrator of that violence has a Muslim-sounding name, 
we, um, we, we try to analyze that violence and we say, well, it must be because of Islam. It must be because of their Muslim identity. It must be because of religion. When we don't ask those same questions when violence happens, um, you know, with perpetrators, we might have different names. So that, that's something I think that we all need to rethink. And um, that kind of an, an, of an analysis is often dehumanizing, right? And I think one another thing I'm hearing from all of us, uh, or all of the panelists, is that we're humans, and we really need to um, keep that and, and really hold that, especially in these times. Especially in these times, I can't say that enough. Um, I have another, I have one other question, and then um, I'm gonna uh, let anyone in the audience who wants to ask a question. So, um, uh, you know, keep uh, have your question ready. Um, we're all here sharing our experiences, um, sharing our experiences as women, um, as members of um, Arab and Muslim communities. Um, do you think this is an important conversation to have? I mean, and I guess um, I'm going to try. I'm going to answer it and say, well, of course, because you're here, right? But why is it important to have these discussions? What, what do you think that we learn? What do we get out of this? Your question is, why are these conversations important? Yes. Assuming that you believe they are. I yes, I do. <laughs> um, and I think Sadaf touched on on a lot of that. Um, I think that there is a especially for Arabs and, and Muslims and Arab Muslim women, um, these days we're all lumped together as one. Um, and that it couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, just across she's from Sudan, I'm originally Palestinian. Pakistan, right? right. <laughs> um, languages are different. Dialect is different. Socially acceptable dress in public is different. Um, food is different. So, and within each country, you have different religions. And I think that that's something that a lot of people just don't realize is that there are a lot of Christian Arabs. Um, there are a lot of mm -hmm. agnostic Arabs. It's not just one one size fits all. So I think that with religion um, being weaponized and with our roots being weaponized um, and used for, in my humble opinion, just political gain and to separate and to push uh, people's agendas that have nothing to do with religion. Um, I think it's important for us to have these conversations and to approach each other with a sense of curiosity so that we can learn and so that we can put the human back in a lot of these things, and you know, not just for Arabs or Muslims across the board. Um, yeah, so. I want you to know we are part of the community. We are sisters and neighbors and friends. Uh, we are caring about you all, about ourselves, about you too. And we are a hard worker as a minor or as an employee. Our kids go in the same school, your kids go, and we can work together to help each other. And like Chattanooga people, Chattanooga community, and should know about our concern and our, our feeling, and we should know about Chattanooga concern and feeling. And we can work all together to help each other, and we can help to build the future of Chattanooga. If we work all together without any different in religion or race or whatever. We are equal, we are all belong to the same um, community. We are equal. Being a teacher, I talk a lot. I'm so sorry for that. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, all praise to the Lord. I'm so, so, so grateful, Lord Almighty, that I get this opportunity to express, you know, myself being a Muslim and see all of the colors here. As you can see, different, I'm covering in that way, she's not, and she's the different, and Jacqueline as well. So, uh, as Rhonda said, we all are one. And I think believing in all one is the key for the success and key to get that um, hatred go away and that word Islamophobia uh, which I never understand why it comes <laughs> it shouldn't be because first we are all human we need to love each other so this platform I think this wonderful idea Jacqueline thank you so very much and um, besides that I just uh, I went to my doctor uh, two days ago and I had a shoulder frozen shoulder problem and I saw 
uh, different, you know, in doctor's office, you see different pictures. So I saw the hand picture. It, the skin was, you know, peeled off, and you can see muscles and the veins like pipe. So how the Lord has created us so beautifully. So why we discuss, why we are worried about colors and differences? Because all inside is one. Why don't we focus on that? And that is very important. You are here today. I'm so grateful for you all taking out time and coming to listen to this forum. And because of you, you might bring your friend and make them think in that way. And if you, if you have any differences or any things that you want to discuss, you can contact Jacqueline. We can do another get together, have more people She's come around. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Sarah. Um, now we have a couple. I'm sorry? Uh, I want to add something. Sure, okay, Rhonda is going to add something and then we'll move to the audience. Uh, I want you all to take all the fear out of your heart from Muslim women or Muslim uh, as general. Uh, give yourself time or a chance to know uh, Muslim. Come and meet us, deal with us, know us. You will, you will see the difference about what you're thinking or what, you, uh, what you're feeling about Muslim. We're, we're totally different. Give yourself time to know us, and you will see the difference. Great. Um, all right. Uh, so now I'll throw it to our audience. Um. Thank you. Uh, I guess I was curious, since you all do represent uh, different communities in Chattanooga, is there, other than forums like this, are there lots of uh, interactions on the common ground of Islam between uh, your various communities that you may be from, uh, and I, I guess that, yeah, that's sort of the essence of the question. How much interaction is there between uh, communities that have this common ground? Because uh, I, I know in the uh, Christian community, it can sometimes be very disparate, and there's sort of a sectarianism, but maybe it's different for uh, y'all's communities, or how do they interact with one another? Since they're discussing, let me answer you. <laughs> and I speak a lot. <laughs> so uh, I think um, we are trying our best. Um, since I moved here, I'm noticing now, after that incident, um, uh, this mosque, uh, Islamic Center, uh, Greater Chattanooga, and on Gun Barrel Road, they have uh, Meet Your Neighbor, but then COVID happened. So it's, it's a good platform to meet up together. But uh, um, after this platform, I think that uh, Jacqueline must be providing some more venues like that. And besides that, being an artist, what I can do, what we are doing, I'm asking Kate um, for a long time, as I told you guys, and then Kate Warren, uh, she's a director of Art 120. We are doing different um, uh, festivals here in Chattanooga, if you are aware of that. Uh, we recently did on um, Cooper's Alley, first festival we did uh, was International Market. And uh, we tried to promote um, people like Rhonda who are sitting home and they're like, uh, there's another um, refugee that, you know, they, they are very good cook. They make such a yummy food. So I said, why not you share that food and sell it and make money and make your visiting card and ask people to give orders to you so you can generate your business. Meanwhile, until she starts studying, you know. So a lot of people, um, Rhonda was telling me they, they were like, like very disheartening the Sudani communities. What you are doing going outside and selling food? So I think that motivation, bringing them out in the events like that, that that's a big uh, opportunity for you all to come on that event, interact them, taste their food, see the colors of their culture, because every culture representing their country, their ambassador at that time. So don't miss those kind of opportunities. We try our level best to post, you know, on uh, media as much as we can. But do, do come on these activities. So yes, we are doing our best. <laughs> Thank Thanks for asking. Oh, my husband is just pointed that Friday, uh, the, mas uh, the mosque, masjid, or church uh, in, uh, on Gun Barrel Road, if you just uh, put the address, uh, you know, so you can come to the sermon on Friday sermon. 
you are more than welcome. Just like we are more than welcome to go to any church and sit like me and my husband did that several times. <laughs> and we asked the people over there, friends, to come and visit us too. So that make a lot of barriers, uh, that take away lots of barriers too. So I think that's, that's a good idea. Thank you, Iqbal. Um, I know Rhonda's going to talk a little bit about how everybody comes together at the mosque. Um, I think my experience in Chattanooga is that the mosque is definitely a place that we can all come together. Back, back in the day, uh, there were like three different mosques, and I think it was divided more so like that's the Bosnian mosque and that's the <laughs> black mosque. And, you know, um, and I think that that says a lot also about kind of how I know personally, I don't frequent the mosque as much as I should. So, um, but, you know, growing up, we were always hanging out with other Arabs or other Palestinians who might be Christian. Um, and so I think that, that the, sometimes your country of origin is a stronger glue than the religion. We get together as a Muslim uh, at the mosque, at the Jordan they mentioned, on Friday within the prayer called Jama on Friday. And we meet on the Eid day, Eid Adha. And Eid of the Tour, Eid of the Tour after Ramadan, we get together and pray and eat and celebrate and enjoy and talk and knowing each other, spending good time with each other. Like, I knew Sarah from there and I knew a lot of people because, uh, like, for me, I, I really like to know new people and, and deal with them. I have no, no, no problem. Like, I like to be a friend with anybody. That's why I knew a lot of people, as she mentioned, at the market, um, international market. I was a vendor there. And last Saturday, I had another market. People, they came and asked, hey, are you with us? And yes, we heard about you food, and we heard about you. But a lot of people, they mentioned that, but I don't know them. But they said, we heard a lot about you. I don't know, like from that market or from where, but I really like that, and I got to know them, and I add more people to my like uh, my the people I know, and I love that, and it's really good experience. I just wanted to add from a non-Muslim perspective, and um, from somebody who's I still consider myself a new to I lived here just three years ago. I had my own very negative stereotypes about what religion was going to look like in Chattanooga. Um, and, you know, just walking around UTC's campus, um, I was not sure what I would find beyond Christianity. Um, I've been very, very surprised and, um, to, you know, to see the diversity of Muslim communities here as we've been talking about. There's three different mosques here, Bosnian Mosque, uh, you know, Black Mosque, the Nation of Islam is also here too, um, and that's run by uh, Brother Kevin Muhammad. Um, so um, I've learned a lot, and I think that the community here is just going to continue to become more diverse. I believe that, or I have heard, um, that we'll be having Afghan refugees here uh, as well. So that will, I think, just con continue to contribute to diversity. I think we have time for one more question from the audience. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know what your experiences are with, uh, like, because you said that you come from different um, areas um, of, yeah, the, the Muslim area of, of Asia, and there are different mm, codes of how you have to dress and how you have to look like. Um, but if you would have the, um, if you would want to express yourself differently, how would they react to that? How would how would being different uh, like affect you? Because Sarah also said like um, she she has to adapt to um, her surroundings if she is with Americans or um, if she could speak Arab now or not. I think it's uh, that would like uh, that's not very very easy because you can never really be your true self. And this is also like um, I'm referring to the fact that um, you said that we are human at first. And yeah, you're yourself at first and you're human at first. 
yeah, what I really want to um, know is your experiences uh, in that case. I can yeah. start answering that real quick. Um, having lived in the Middle East and having also, you know, just traveled around to different Middle Eastern countries, I think that the topic you're touching on has a lot to do with the Arab part more so than the Muslim part. That does play something, but um, overall reputation and belonging to a family and how the outside sees you and just, you know, being a, a good um, representative of your family is an Arab thing. Christian, Jewish, Muslim, doesn't matter. Uh, but it looks so different. So I lived in Kuwait. Um, and I could, I didn't have to cover my hair. You can't walk around in booty shorts, but you know, and you could, but you don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> some people have, you know, colored hair. Some people, you know, have facial piercings. You go to Lebanon, everything goes. Um, whether you're Christian, Muslim, doesn't really matter. But then even within families. So to visit my father's family, I would dress very conservatively and you know, even put something over my um, hair, but around my mother's family, I didn't have to be, you know. Is it, but I think we do it here too. And I think it, it sometimes, I, I think it, it makes sense why people view it as a burden. Um, but I guess when you're in it, it just, that's just how it is. You know what I mean? Um, you could technically not do it, but it's important to me, for example, to not go against what my family, you know, or give them a bad name in public. So I think it's just, it just depends on how you look at it. Let me add Am something. I answering your question? Yeah. Let me add something to it. <laughs> I think why she was doing that, covering herself and her father's family, I think she's just respecting them. So because uh, they're... Um, you know, again, you are individual. What you are doing, you are doing for yourself. You are being respectful for that family. If I take my example, I, I do it like everywhere, same. Except in my home, own, own house, in my home. I don't want to cover my hair. But, you know, I just like to be, you know, this is what I like to be like. Maybe kind of modest, I can say. But I think modesty is in your heart, modesty in your eyes. So that is uh, important, not just for female, for men as well. <laughs> so it's always happened with females. I think, no, it's male and female both. So that's how you can uh, take, um, you know, the crimes and the bad things away from the society. Corruptions and, you know, you know the bad things, right? <laughs> so I think that's, that's because of that, yeah. Thanks for asking. Yeah, about me, um, like we are more democratic in our family. Um, like I'm covering my hair, but my sister, she's not. She's wearing pants, and she's okay with that. And um, my family are okay with that. But when I get married, my husband is family. All of them, they wear black, and they cover their face, except me. I feel like my I'm looking weird in the middle of them. Like I said, I decided to wear as they wear. My husband, he doesn't like that, but I told him, hey, everybody, if your family wears like this, except me, I don't want them to look at me like, see, hmm. he, he doesn't want her to be like us, like, why she's not covering? And I decided to cover all my body with black except my eye. You cannot see anything except my eye. But when we way here to, the, to Chattanooga, uh, in there, when they say, hey, you cannot go like this to America. You have to take all this out. You get out of this flag and wear color, and you will be okay. And I did. Now my husband, he's very happy because I'm not wearing black anymore. <laughs> okay. He was telling me, like this, you're pretty than wearing the black. <laughs> There's so many ways that we express our identities, right? Um, and clothing is, is, uh, is just one of them. Um, I think for the, the last question or um, uh, last note I want to end on is I'd like to hear from each of you um, very, very briefly, what are one or two words as takeaways that you would like us and our audience to, uh, to leave uh, from here with tonight? One or two uh, ideas uh, or phrases about um, your experiences as Muslim and Arab women? 
you know, just going back to being a Muslim woman means so much and different things to different people. And I think it's it's worth uh, taking the time to kind of learn about the different countries and um, what makes them special. Uh, another thing is just for the record, the it's like the woman in the Middle East for some reason has become this uh, entity that people feel called to defend and speak on her behalf and um, do all of those things. And I just wanted to say that's not really necessary. You know, approaching things with curiosity is one thing. I think as Americans, we have the tendency to want to fix everything and make it look like what looks safe to us. Um, but oftentimes, we're not asked uh, for our opinion. And I think that that's a really important thing to just you know be open-minded, erase your mind, um, but not in a flock of sheep kind of way, I'm not sure, <laughs> um, and just kind of learn and approach things with uh, curiosity. I'm going to repeat what I said before. Please give your time, yourself time to know us and deal with us, and you will know who we are. Um, I really appreciate your attention and your time here. Um, like I said at the beginning, I think this is part of some important discussions that we're having here in Chattanooga. And I hope that you continue these discussions with your friends, with your family, with your loved ones. Um, we would love to uh, continue our conversations upstairs in the gallery. I think we have until 8 o'clock. The museum's open until 8 o'clock. Um, so we'll end our conversation there. And um, yeah, I think this has been really great. Thank you. Thank you.